your ability to use Japanese candlesticks to make optimal trading decisions and inevitably make money in any market is imperative. It is something you just can't do without. If you do not understand certain aspects of candlesticks or if you don't really understand how to use them effectively, then that is likely a major factor why you are actually losing money as a trading or why you are struggling to create these consistent profits over time. So for that purpose, what I want to do in this video is to show you guys everything you need to know about Japanese candlesticks. No matter your experience level, this video is for you. Whether you are a complete beginner seeking that first spark of understanding, or if you are a more advanced trader looking for refined insights and candlestick mastery, there's a place here for everyone. And by the end, you will see why this video is a must watch for every trader out there. Grab a notebook, settle in, and let's embark on this candlestick journey together. So welcome everyone to chapter one of this candlestick pattern course. This chapter is going to be all about understanding candlestick patterns and understanding candlesticks. And we will start with the very basics and then in a step-by-step -step manner move towards more and more advanced topics. So no matter your starting point, if you are a complete beginner or if you have been trading for years, my goal with this chapter is that you will walk away with lots of new knowledge. So let's start by taking a look at how to read candlestick patterns. So we have two main types of candles. First of all, we have the red candle, which is also called a bearish candle and we have the green candle which is called a bullish candle. A bearish candle is a candlestick where the price decreases during the session and a bullish candle is a candlestick where the price increases during the candle. Every candlestick can represent different time frames. So one candle can be for example one day uh, but one candle can also for example represent one hour or even one minute. But for the sake of this example, we can think about every candlestick as representing one day. So for the green candle or the bullish candle, you can see that the price opens or starts right here. So the day starts right here and the day closed all the way up here. So you can see that during the day, the price increased. But you can also see that we have a low point all the way down here and we have a high point all the way up here. This means that during the day, the price went down all the way down here as the lowest point, and during the day, the price increased and reached a highest point all the, way, all the way up here, but then when the day closed, the price was at this level right here. The same thing, but the opposite is true for the red candle or the bearish candle. The red candle started the day right here. During the day, it went up, reached a highest point all the way up here, the price went down to a lowest point, which is all the way down here, but the day closed at this level right here. Now, as for the terminology, the wide part of the candle, which is this part right here for the red one, and which is this part right here for the green one, this is what we call the candlestick body, or sometimes we call it the candlestick real body. We use these words interchangeably. The small part of the candles, which we have right here, right here, right here and right here we call wicks or another word is shadow so if you hear either wick or shadow you know that we talk about the small part of the candle so now let's switch the attention and take a look at how can we know how strong a candlestick is and this section right here is extremely important and it will be valuable throughout the rest of the video uh, so make sure to really pay attention now so if you look at these two channels right here you can see that they look very similar they have a lowest point at the same level they open here at the same level as well and they also closed at the same level the only difference here is the upper part of the candle, which remember we call this either a wick or a shadow. You can see that this candle right here has a very long upper wick, 
while the other candle right here has a very short upper wick. So even though these candles closed at the exact same level and they look very similar, they tells us a very different story about the price. For the candle to the right here, we can actually see that we saw a strong price reaction because the bulls managed to push the price all the way up here but before the candle closed, the bears actually managed to take control and push the price all the way down. This actually makes this candle right here much more bearish compared to this candle right here. Even though the two candles look very similar, the wicks of the candles, so this part and this part, are super important. And this is something that will come up again and again and again in this course. So if we only look at these two candles as only two variables, this candle right here is more likely, it's more likely that we will see, for example, a red candle and that the selling pressure will continue after this candle compared to this candle right here. One thing that helps is to just visualize how the price could have looked like during this candle. You can see that during this candle right here, the price may have moved something like this, while for the other candle here, the price is more something like this, which is a much more bullish, uh, bullish movement compared to a movement that looks something like this. The same thing is of course also true for red candles. So let's say we have one red candle that looks something like this, and then we have another red candle that looks maybe something like this. Once again, these two candles look very, very similar, but the big difference here is that the one to the left have a long lower wick, while the candle to the right have a short lower wick. So for this red candle to the left here, you can see that we have lots of buying pressure. I'm so sorry for my ugly handwriting here, but you can see that we have much more buying pressure on the left one compared to the right candle. And this actually makes the candle to the left much more bullish compared to the candle to the right. And this leads to an important insight that, you know, feel free to write this down. The body of the candle relative to the wick is very important. Now I want you guys to take a look at these three candles right here. As you can see, all of these three candles have the highest point here at the around same level. At the same time, all of these candles have their lowest point also at the same level. But in this case, you can see that all of the bodies, right? This is the candlestick body. The sort of length of the bodies here are very different. You can see that here we have a very small body, the next body is a bit larger, and this body right here is massive. And the question now is, what does this tell us about the price? Well, as always, it can help a lot to visualize the potential price action during the candles. So for example, the candle to the right here, we can imagine that the price moved something like this. It started off, it moved down, then it went up all the way up to this point right here. But before the candle closed, the price once again returned to this point. The next candle may have moved something like this. We can also imagine that the price started to go up here in the beginning, but then it fell down to the low. The, the price went up here, all the way up to the highest point, but what we know is that before the candle closed, the price went down to that point once again. If we take a look at the, the last candle here, maybe once again, maybe the price started to move up, but what we know here is that the price went down here to a lowest point all the way down here, it went up to a highest point all the way up here, and the price closed right here. So if you take a look at these three different candles, you can see that the price action of the candle to the right here looks sort of very uncertain. We can't really say if the bulls are in control or if the bears are in control. The price is highly volatile here. While if we take a look at the candle to the right here, we can see that it's much more clearer that the bulls are in control of the price. You can see we have a distinct movement here towards the upside. Candlesticks that have very small bodies, like these three candles right here, compared to the wicks, you can see in all of these cases we have very, you know, long wicks here compared to the real bodies of the candles. These type of candles are called indecision candles and they represent that neither the bulls or the bears are in full control of the market.
When we see these type of candles, it's usually a sign to wait or stay away from the market. But depending on the context, so depending on how the price looked like before we saw these candles, they can mean different things. So what do I mean by this? Well, let me change the color here to green real quick here. And uh, let's say that, you know, before the, this candle up here right here, let's say that before this candle, we had an uptrend. So we had many bullish candles here. We had many bullish green candles before this massive candle appeared right here. If this candle comes after an uptrend like this, what does this mean? Well, in this case, this is actually an indication that the uptrend is losing momentum. Or in other words, that the bulls are losing some steam. But at the same time, if we, for example, have a downtrend before this candle appears. So let's say that we have, you know, before this candle appeared, we had many red candles happening. What does this mean? Well, in this case, this candle could indicate that the downtrend is losing some speed, right? So these indecision candles can both be bullish or bearish compared to the context before the patterns appeared. And this right here is so important that I want to write it down. Context matters. And this is true for all candles. You know, where a candlestick appears on the chart will matter a lot. For example, let's take a look at this candle right here. You can see that this is a case where we have a long lower wick or a long lower shadow and the candle has a relatively small body. And the context or in other words, where this pattern appears in the market matters a lot. So let's for example say that this pattern appears after a strong move to the downside. You can see that during all of these candles, the bears were in full control. All of these candles had barely any wick and they had large uh, bodies here, indicating that the bears have full control of the market. But if we see, you know, after this downtrend, if a candlestick like this appears, what does this tell us about the price? Well, as we can see, now the price continued to go down here, continued to go down, but then we saw a strong price reaction to the upside. So if this pattern appears after a strong downtrend, then this is a strong bullish signal. And this pattern actually has a name. It's called a bullish hammer pattern. And we will talk about this pattern later on in this video when I show you guys my top five uh, candlestick patterns for beginners. Later on in this video, I will also talk about my top five candlestick patterns for more advanced traders. This pattern right here is amazing. But what I want to show you guys with this whole example is that it matters a lot where this pattern appear. So let's delete all of these previous candles. And let's say that before this candle appeared, we had, you know, the price was just going sideways. You can imagine, you know, these candles being either, uh, you know, uh, green or red. Uh, we just had, you know, some sideways movement b before this pattern appeared right here. If these patterns appear, after this kind of movement, then this pattern doesn't really say a lot at all. We can even imagine that these candles looked more, you know, more random. We had some high wicks here and there. And you can see that if we imagine the price movement of these candles prior to the hammer, you know, let's say that the price, you know, it went sort of up and down like this. It went something like this. And as you can see, when the hammer appears after this kind of movement, then it doesn't really say anything because the hammer will just add on to this sort of sporadic movement. Now you can't really see because of my camera, but I hope you get the point. I want to really emphasize that the context matters a lot when it comes to patterns. So now let's switch the attention to something very important. And this is something that you have to understand in order to be a successful trader. And that is to understand momentum or speed of price action. So let's take a look at two examples right here. In example one, we have strong candles here that pushes the price down with, you know, pretty small wicks and we can clearly see that the bears are in control of this market. In example two here, let's take a look at another example, example two. Please excuse my ugly writing right here. But in example two, we have a price that looks something like this the sort of candles are getting more and more sort of larger wicks and you can see that the price start to look something like this. Which of these two examples do you think have the strongest momentum to the downside? 
well, the strongest bearish momentum can be found in example one, because as we can see in this example, the speed that the price moves to, towards the downside is very fast. If you visualize this price, it moves something like this. You can see the price moves fast here to the downside, while in the other example, you can see that in this case, yes, the price started, you know, by moving pretty fast to the downside, but as the price went lower and lower, you can see that the momentum was sort of slowing down. You can see that the price is starting almost to look like it will reverse to the upside. And you can think about this as the momentum of the price is slowing down. The bears are slowly and slowly losing control of the price right here. So if you have price action that looks something like this, after a downtrend, this is actually a signal for traders that the trend might be coming to an end or at least that the trend might be slowing down. Let's take a look at another example right here. We might have a few candles that look something like this. Uh, as you can see, in this case, the price really doesn't have any strong direction here. But then let's imagine that we suddenly see a candle that looks like this. In this case, you can see that this candle indicates a strong change in the momentum of the price. The price pretty much moved sideways here for a long time and then it suddenly shot up higher. This right here is what we call a momentum candle. And a momentum candle is a candle that shows much stronger momentum compared to the previous candles. Always remember that the context is very important. Usually I try to define momentum candles as being at least, you know, two, but preferably three times larger than the previous candles. And specifically, you want to look at the real bodies. So here we have a real body, a real body, a real body. And as you can see that this most recent candle, this massive green candle right here, it looks to be more than three times larger than the previous real bodies of the candles. So this right here is a strong momentum candle. And many times momentum candles can actually be the beginning of massive uptrends or the beginning of massive downtrends and the momentum candle is super important to be able to spot and the most important thing about momentum candles is as i said you know how large is the real body of the momentum candle compared to the previous price action so now guys you hopefully have a basic understanding of how to read and more importantly how to interpret candlesticks and candlestick patterns so now i think we are ready for the next step and that is to put this knowledge into real life. Now we are ready to take a look at how to actually trade in real markets using candlestick patterns. Alright guys, so welcome to chapter 2 of this candlestick pattern course. This chapter is all about putting the knowledge we learned in chapter 1 into action. I will show you guys in a step-by-step -step manner how to trade using candlesticks in real markets. So right now as we're speaking we are looking at gold and we are looking at a daily time frame. And the first lesson here is that candlestick patterns are much more significant if they appear at key levels. So for example, if you take a look at this candlestick right here, you can see this red one, you can see that this one is pretty similar to the candle we talked about earlier in the video. You can see that on this red candle, we saw a pretty long lower wick here, indicating that the sellers might be losing some momentum here. And as you can see, this one is actually pretty similar to the hammer pattern. However, what is very important about this candle is that this candle appeared in the middle of nowhere. And when a candlestick appears in the middle of nowhere on the chart, we usually want to completely avoid that candle. However, if we take a look here at the chart, we can see that it looks like we have one pretty significant level of support right here. You can see the price, we bounced here, the price went up, we came down, bounced once again at this level, a smaller bounce this time, and then yet another time we saw a bounce coming in at that level. This is a key level of support. To draw support levels, you can go up here to where it says trend line tools and use the horizontal line, but I actually prefer to go up here where it says geometric shapes and actually use the rectangle tool to draw my area of support. So as you can see, right here we have an 
a key area of support and it is at these key areas of either support and resistance where candlesticks are much more significant. So let's for example take a look at these two candles right here. You can see that the price came down to the support area. We saw this red candle right here with a pretty significant lower wick. You can see we did see a small bounce coming in here at this red candle but this candle was probably not enough to enter a trade. But if we look here at the next green candle, you can see that we have a massive, massive momentum candle, right? Remember the momentum candle we talked about in chapter one. And because we are seeing a strong momentum candle coming at a key level of support, this makes this candle much more significant and could actually be used as an entry signal. Later on in the chapter, we will take a look at even more ways to make these kind of trades even stronger. But for now, let's just realize that this momentum candle coming in at a key area of support is a strong signal that the bulls might start to take control here of the market and that the trend will reverse to the upside. So let's take a look at how we could have played this trade. So let's open up our long position right here. After seeing this strong momentum candle, one example of a trade would be to enter at the candle close of this candle. A very common way to get entry points is to wait for the candle to close. In this case, we are at a pretty high time frame. Remember guys, we are on the daily time frame. So on this chart, we have to wait one day in order for a new candle to form. But this is just an example. You can use the principles I'm talking about in this, in this video on all time frames. So this could be, for example, a five minute time frame or a one hour time frame. The same principles would apply. But as an example, let's say that you enter here on the candle close. As for your support level, a good way to set your stop loss is many times to put your stop loss below the key area. So you can see we have a key area of support right here. So what I like to do is to put the stop loss a bit lower than the key area. You can see I leave space here for some wiggle room. So if the price would go down once again to test this area, it's possible that we can get yet another bounce and still not be stopped out. So we can still avoid to lose the trade. As for your profit target, many times it's good to also use key areas of support or resistance to take your profit. So for example, right here, you can see that we do have a pretty significant area coming in at around this gray area right here. And in this case, you can see that this one acted as support all the way back here. We saw support coming in once again. Then we broke this key area of support but then this previous support right flipped to become resistance. So one way to set your target for this trade is to set your target just slightly below the area of resistance. So in this case, your trade could have looked something like this. The risk to reward ratio right here is around 1.5, meaning that the green area right here is around 1.5 times as large as the stop area here. So this basically means that when we take these kind of trades, we can have a win rate below 50%, but still make money. The next thing I wanna talk about is trends because trading in the same direction as the trend can give us an advantage and in turn improve our win rate. Just super, super quick before we take a look at trends and why trends are so important. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, I would be super, super happy if you can show that by dropping a like on the video. It really, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. And it also makes me know that you guys like these kind of, uh, these kind of videos. And I also actually have a question for you guys. And that is, do you guys prefer, prefer to have the chart black like we're having right now or would you prefer to have a white chart uh, please guys let me know that down in the comments below if you want to but now guys as i said the next rule when it comes to trading with candlesticks is that if we can take trades that are in the same direction as the trend this can many times give us much better trading opportunities so if you take a look at this chart right right here what is the trend on this chart Well, what we can notice here is that we are printing consecutive lower highs. So we have one high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. And at the same time, we're printing one low, lower low, lower low, lower low. And when we have consecutive 
lower highs while at the same time we're printing consecutive lower lows then we have a downtrend and when we have a downtrend it's usually a good idea to look out for short trades so we want to look out for trades where we are betting that the price will go down when it comes to downtrends it's usually a good idea to use our trend line tool here to try to draw this sort of downtrend we're drawing a resistance line here which is the you know about the area where the price is getting reacted you can see we got one reaction right here got yet another reaction right here and if you take a close look at this reaction right here we can actually see a very interesting thing let's zoom in on the chart on this reaction and what we can see here is that on this resistance we actually saw a bearish candlestick pattern forming this candlestick pattern right here is what we call a bearish engulfing pattern and a bearish engulfing pattern is a candlestick that indicates a potential reversal to the downside and this pattern is significant if it comes after a move towards the upside you can see in this case we had a move towards the upside right we saw a bearish engulfing pattern and we also saw the bearish engulfing pattern at a key resistance level and also we also have a downtrend which makes short trades trades where we bet that the market will go down more likely to succeed so this right here would in my opinion have been a good short entry point so we go up here to our short position and as we talked about earlier many times a good entry is where the candlestick closes so you can see the candlestick closed right here later on in this video i will talk about how we can make this trade even stronger but for now let's just say that we enter the trade right here so what would be a good stop loss level well as usual we want to set our stop loss above the resistance before we talked about below the support but in this case we want to set the stop loss above the downward sloping resistance and to be more specific i set my stop loss above the highest point right here because if we set our stop loss above this point we can allow for the price to go up here and perhaps form a double top uh, before continuing here in the same direction as the trend so setting our stop loss at this point makes sense for multiple reasons as for your target you can once again use key levels of support or resistance as your target for example right here we have a potential support so you can use this one to set your target level just slightly above that level or another way to take profit targets is to use a risk to reward ratio a common risk to reward ratio is to use a risk to reward ratio of two it's very simple very straightforward and when having this risk to reward ratio as long as you win like 40 percent of the trades you will make a profit and as you can see this was a very nice trade the price started to move in our direction right away it saw a small bounce here but after a few more candles, we locked in some nice profits. Now I want to talk about something that can improve our odds of winning trades even further. And that is something called confluences. Confluences is when we combined more than one trading technique or more than one technical variable to improve our win rate. So for example, in this case we recently talked about, so far we have one variable and that is that we are in a downtrend. This improves our win rate to win a short trade. Another confluence is that we are seeing a bearish engulfing pattern happening here at this key level so now we have two confluences but we can actually look out for even more uh, technical variables here to improve our trade even further so for example in this case what we can notice here is that we had an area here a previous support area you can see that this one acted as support at least one time two time three time and actually pretty much four times here if we extend this area even, even further you, you can see we saw yet another bounce right here and if we extend this trade we can actually see that this one flipped to become resistance in the future right so this is a very common principle in trading that when we have a support level many times when we break that support it can flip to become support uh, to become resistance here in the future and as you can see we saw this selling pressure coming in here 
at the key resistance. So this is yet another technical variable improving our trade even further. So you can see that this bearish engulfing pattern happened at a key resistance area, also a downward sloping resistance, and we also had the pattern. So we had three bearish things happening at the same time. So this makes it a very nice trade. Let's take a look at yet another example right here. If you take a look at this chart, you can see that we had a very clear support area forming back here. You can see we had one touch as support, then we had yet another touch. And if we extend this area, we can see something super, super interesting. You can see that the price, it took very long time here. The price went up, down, up again, but then we went down here and we got a massive reaction of the support. You can see we saw a very strong reaction here, a massive, massive uh, lower wick of this red candle right here, indicating that the bears quickly lost control of the market here. And because we saw this massive lower wick happening at a key support area, we have two variables indicating that we might see, you know, a strong reversal here towards the upside. After this, we saw a doji candle representing market indecision, but the third green candle here showed strong bullish momentum, indicating that indeed it looks like the bulls are taking control of the market. This right here could have been where we entered our long trade. And as for profit target, once again, we look out for key levels. You can see, for example, right here, we had a key resistance. We got rejected one time, two time. So it did make sense here to set your profit target just below this res uh, below this resistance. So as you can see, it turned out that we got rejected at this resistance, but because we set our profit target just below the resistance, this still allowed us to lock in some very nice profit. As for your stop loss, in this case, you could of course set your stop loss below the support. But as you can see, if we set the stop loss all the way down here, we have a risk to reward ratio of one. That is definitely possible. But in this trade, I would probably set my stop loss below, you can see below the candle right here. So below this doji candle, because if the price would have fallen, you know, to that point, it indicates that, you know, it looks like the bulls are not really taking control here. And the odds are that the price will once again go down and test this key area. So now guys, you hopefully have a better understanding on how to trade using Japanese candlestick patterns. So now we are ready to move in to chapter three. And in chapter three, I will show you guys my top five candlestick patterns for beginners. These are patterns that happens a lot. And I think that every single trader should learn these candlestick patterns. So welcome everyone to chapter three of this candlestick pattern trading course. And in this chapter, I will reveal my top five candlestick patterns for beginners. And one important thing I do wanna mention right away is that just because a candlestick pattern is simple and beginner friendly, does definitely not mean that the candle is not effective. As a matter of fact, many times the most simple patterns and patterns that happen frequently in the markets or the most useful patterns. So yes guys, this chapter is beginner friendly, but these patterns might be, you know, even more useful if you are an advanced trader. These patterns are used by professional traders all the time. So guys, make sure to, you know, really focus during this chapter because we will not only take a look at how to identify the patterns, but we will also take a look at how to actually trade the patterns in real markets. So the first pattern I want to talk about is the bullish hammer. And this is one of these patterns that happens all the times in the market. And this pattern, if used correctly, can be a super powerful tool. But let's start here by taking a look at how does the pattern look like. Well, the hammer pattern is characterized by a long lower wick. You can see the lower wick here is pretty long. We have a relatively small real body. So this part right here needs to be small. And the third thing is that the upper wick, so this part right here, should either not exist at all, or we can allow for a very small upper wick. But the most important part here is that we have a small real body and a long lower wick. To be specific, we want this lower wick or lower shadow to be at least twice the length of the real body of the candle 
but preferably we want the lower wick to be maybe three times as large as the real body or even longer than that. Another important thing about the hammer is that the hammer can be either green but it's also okay if the pattern is red so this part right here can be red and it's still a valid hammer. You could argue that the green hammer is a bit more bullish than the red hammer but both of these patterns are valid hammers. Another super important thing about the hammer is that in order for this to be a valid hammer we need to see the hammer appearing after a downtrend. So prior to the actual pattern we need the price to go down. The hammer pattern is what we call a reversal pattern meaning that it indicates a potential reversal here from a downtrend to an uptrend. Another important thing about the hammer candle is that it's most effectively used together with a significant support level. So when we see a hammer appearing at a key support level, many times we will actually see the wick here just slightly drop below the support here before we see the reversal to the upside. This makes the hammer pattern even more significant. So now let's take a look at a real life example here. And if you guys want to, you can pause the video right here and try to identify the hammer pattern on this chart. By the way, we are currently looking at an Apple chart on a 15 minute time frame, but you can use the hammer on pretty much every single time frame. But all right, so the hammer pattern is right here. If you manage to identify the pattern, congratulations, but let's take a look at why this is a good hammer. Well, first of all, we can notice that the wick or the shadow is at least two times larger, right? than the real body of the pattern. Uh, we can also notice that we don't really have any uh, upper wick in this case, which is a good sign. As you remember, we, don't, we want to either have a very small wick or no wick at all. And also remember that in order for us to have a good hammer pattern, it needs to appear after a downtrend. And as you can see, prior to this candle, we had a strong movement towards the downside. So we had a movement towards the downside and we had a hammer pattern up here. But also remember guys that this pattern is best used together with a support level. And in order to find support level, we need to look a bit to the left here and take a look at previous market structure. And as you can see, if we look, look back all the way back here, you can see that it appears that we had some kind of support here. You can see we had three times support and one could also argue that we had some resistance coming in here as well. So we can use our rectangle tool here and try to draw some sort of support area at around here. So as you can see, in this case, the hammer pattern appeared. We didn't really touch the support, right? You can see the hammer pattern, uh, the price reversed just above the support area, but this is still a very good sign. If we see the hammer either appearing at the support, so if the hammer would have looked something like this, this would, be, this would have been a good sign. Uh, but also if the pattern, for example, that dropped below the support, and looked something like this, this would have still been a good side sign because this indicates that the support level is being respected here and that the bulls are slowly starting to gain control here. So for multiple reasons, this is a good hammer candle. Let's just take a very quick look at how we could have traded this pattern. So let's open up a long position. A common entry point for the hammer is to enter at the candle, candle close. And this is a very common theme, as you know from chapter two and one. And as for your stop loss here, there are a few different methods you can set your stop loss. The most common one is to set the stop just below the lowest point of the hammer. So to set the stop loss below this point right here. However, we always, as you know, we always need to take the overall market structure in mind. So because we have a support level right here, in my opinion, it does make sense in this case to perhaps actually set your stop loss below this support level. So you can either have, have a tight stop, set the stop loss below the hammer, or set the stop loss below the support. Let's say that we go for the tighter stop in this case. You may wonder what is the profit target? Well, as you have learned from early in this video, a common, you know, simple profit target is a two to one risk to reward ratio, but you can also of course use, you know, market structure such as support and resistance to set, you know, larger profit targets. Now guys, let's take a look at our second pattern right 
right here and this is the bearish shooting star pattern but the most important thing is once again that the wick in this case the upper wick should be at least twice as large but preferably you know three times or more times as large as the real body and as you can see once again the real body can be either green or red you can actually see in this picture you can see that the upper wick in this case is many many times larger than the real body and this is usually a signal that we are talking about a strong shooting star pattern as for the lower wick you can see as it says right here we want to have little to no lower shadow so it is okay if we have some small shadows sticking out here on the bottom but preferably we want to see no shadow at all now let's jump back here to the chart and if you want to you can pause this video and try to identify the shooting star pattern but i'm gonna reveal it right away the shooting star is right here you can see on this candle we had a very long uh, upper shadow we had a small real body and once again we had no lower wick so this is a you know clear looking shooting star pattern another thing i want to just notice here is that as you can see this is a green candle right here uh, the shooting star can be either green or red but this is still a bearish pattern and a pattern that indicates a potential reversal to the downside and now i remember that i forgot to mention this but of course the shooting star needs to appear remember it's the opposite of the hammer so the shooting star needs to appear after an uptrend and as you can see in this case we had an uptrend the shooting star appeared and this is a pattern indicating a potential reversal to the downside one more thing we do want to look out for is a potential resistance level if the shooting star appears at a resistance this makes the shooting star more significant and as you can see in this case we do have some resistance right here right you can see we definitely have some kind of resistance we could draw it actually all the way up here to you know include all of the candlestick wicks you can see we got reacted multiple times right here and you can see that in this case the shooting star went just slightly slightly above the resistance immediately reversed and this right here is a very nice sign when we are seeing a shooting star let's take a look at a quick example how we can trade this pattern remember this is a bearish pattern so now we want to enter a short position and bet against the market right as for our stop loss in this case the stop loss is more straightforward i would definitely set my stop loss above uh, the highest point of the shooting star so if the price goes up and tests the resistance once again we still have some wiggle room here so we the price can go up without us being stopped out from yet another touch of the resistance so we set our stop loss right there and as for our profit target let's keep it simple this time set a uh, you know two to one risk to reward ratio and as you can see in this case this trade played out beautifully now guys for pattern three we're gonna talk about the doji and this candle is super super important to understand this is a pattern once again that happens all the time in the market and this is a very special pattern one thing that makes the doji candle so special is that the real body you can see the real body right here doesn't really exist you can see the doji candle opens right here remember the candle opens right here during the day the price reached a lowest point all the way down here a highest point all the way down here but you can see that the closing level a perfect doji closes at the exact same level as where the candle opened however it is okay to have a doji that looks something like this you can have you know a very small real body so you could have a candle that looks something like this and this still counts as a doji the most important thing here is that the real body should be either just a straight line or the real body needs to be very very small a doji candle is a candlestick that represents indecision in the market and this basically means that neither the bulls or the bears are in full control so the context for the doji candle is very significant let's imagine here that you have a strong trend towards the downside and then you know a doji candle or even multiple doji candles appear this right here is actually a sign that the downtrend is either cooling down or that we might actually see a reversal here towards the upside but it is important to notice here that just because the doji candles appears after a downtrend 
The doges are not a reversal pattern, so these patterns does not indicate a reversal to the upside. It basically only indicates that we are starting to see uncertainty and that we are starting to see indecision in the market. So if you for example see a sideways movement like this and after the side sideways movement you see a few doji candles appear. As you can see the doji candles can look a bit different, they can look uh, in many other in many different ways uh, but as you can see if we see some doji candles appearing here after a sideways movement what does this tell us about the price well it doesn't really tell us an anything because we had already a very indecisive movement and then the doji candles appears and as you know the doji candles implies indecision so in this case it just reinforces that neither the bulls or the bears are in control of the market. Last but not least, if we have an uptrend here, and then we see a few doji candles appearing here, this is an indication that the uptrend might be losing steam, but this is not a reversal signal. This simply just means that the trend or the movement is starting to get uncertain. So now guys, let's jump back here into the charts and take a look at an example. So as you can see, in this case, we had a strong movement towards the downside. As you can see, we had multiple strong momentum candles here towards the downside. Uh, but then we started, started to see some bullish candles appearing. After these two bullish candles, you can see here that the market started to print multiple doji candles. So remember, what does this tell us about the price? Well, it basically tells us that the movement here towards the downside is losing speed, the bears are losing control, and that the market is now moving into some uncertain territory. You may of course wonder, how do we trade the doji candles? Well, one important thing here is that most of the times the doji candles actually gives us a signal to not trade, to not trade at all. Many times we want to stay away from markets that look something like this. You can see in these type of environments, the price is highly random and they are hard to trade. However, there are of course some use cases. Let's say that you shorted the market right here. So you were in a short position, betting that the market would go down. Uh, if you are in a short position right here, and then you see doji candles starting to appear on the chart. Depending on your trading strategy, this could actually be a signal that you might want to exit your trade and lock in some profits. Because as we talked about, this is a signal that the market is starting to lose steam. Now guys, the time has come for the bullish engulfing pattern. This is one of my favorite bullish reversal patterns, meaning that this pattern right here indicates a reversal to the upside. Uh, just super, super quick before we continue, but we're taking a look at the bullish engulfing pattern and continue this video. Guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, it would be super, super awesome and helpful if you can show that by dropping a like on, on the video. It really helps out more than you think, guys, and it also makes me know that you guys are liking these type of uh, content. You know, I really enjoy making these longer educational videos, so if you guys want to see more of them, don't hesitate to show that by dropping a like. Um, but now, guys, let's take a look at how does the bullish engulfing pattern look like. Well, the bullish engulfing pattern, now we are talking about a two candlestick pattern. So the bullish engulfing pattern consists of two candles. The first candle has a small real body. So this should be, you know, relatively small. And here the color of the pattern is actually important. So for the bullish engulfing pattern, we do want to see a red candle as the first candle. So candle A here, we want to see a small red candle. For the next candle, candle B, we want the candlestick to open below the previous candle and close above the previous candle. So this is why this is this is called a bullish engulfing pattern, because as you can see, the, the green candle sort of engulfs the previous red candle. For some asset types, such as cryptocurrencies and so on and so on, for some asset types that trades 24 seven, it is okay for the bullish engulfing pattern to open here uh, the green candle to open here at the low of the red one. So it is okay to have a pattern that looks like this. This right here is the red candle and then the bullish engulfing pattern, the next green candle starts right here and engulfs the red one right here. So this one is red and this one is green. This example right here is also a, a valid bullish engulfing pattern. 
the important thing, as I said guys, this is a reversal pattern, meaning that the pattern should appear here after a downtrend. So before this pattern appears, we need to have a downtrend. And the goal of this pattern is to reverse the price here towards the upside. Let's jump back here to the chart and take a look at a real life example. Right now I'm looking at Netflix on a daily time frame. I try to switch it up a bit. Um, and the bullish engulfing pattern you can see appeared right here. You can see this red candle together with the green one. As you can see for this particular pattern, let's zoom in here a bit. You can see that the most important thing is that the green candle, the real body of the green candle should open below the real body of the red candle and close above the real body of the red candle. So you can see in this case, we have a massive, massive bullish engulfing. Um, as you can see here, it's okay for the red candle to have candlestick wicks, uh, you know, below. Uh, and the red candle can basically have any kind of candlestick wicks. The most important thing is that we want the green candle to open below and close above the red candle. The second important thing about the bullish engulfing is as we talked about, it needs to appear after a move towards the downside. So here you can see we had a move towards the downside and then the bullish engulfing pattern appeared. One more thing we preferably want to see here is that we do want to see the bullish, bullish engulfing pattern appearing at a support level. And as you can see, in this case, we actually had some pretty clear support. And um, you can see this one both acted as resistance and support right here. So as you can see, we had a level that acted as resistance, broke resistance, flip resistance to become support one time, two time. Uh, and then here on the third touch, we saw this beautiful bullish engulfing pattern. Let's take a look at a quick trade example, use our long position. Many times we do want to enter here at the candle close of the bullish engulfing. Uh, for this example, I would set my stop loss once again below the lowest point of the pattern. Remember, this red candle is part of the pattern and the lowest point of this red one is all the way down here. And as for our profit target, you can use, you know, either a fixed risk to reward ratio. Uh, but in this case, it can actually make sense. You can see that we did have, you know, some support coming in here. I'm sorry, I mean resistance, of course. Um, so you could put your target just, uh, you know, below that resistance, expecting a potential new touch. And as you can see in this example, the price actually did bounce and we got rejected once again at the resistance. The fifth candlestick pattern that every beginner, but also every advanced trader need to know is the bearish engulfing pattern. And this one is, as you can guess, pretty similar to the bullish engulfing pattern, but the opposite. In this case, we want to first see an uptrend. Then we want a small green candle to appear. This is the first candle of the pattern. The next candle needs in this case to open above, right? Open above the green one and close below. So it needs to engulf the previous green candle. It is okay to have candlestick wicks. You know, the green candle could look something like this. Perhaps we had some sort of wick looking like this. The red one can also have wicks here. But the important thing is that the red candle needs to engulf the green candle. And the goal of this pattern is to see a reversal to a downtrend, as you can see right here. Let's take a look here at a real life example. Right now we're looking at Google on a daily time frame, And as you can see right here, a bullish engulfing pattern appeared. And one very, very interesting thing about this pattern is that as you can see the first part, the first candle of this pattern was actually a doji candle. And remember from when we talked about doji candles earlier in this video, when we see a move towards the upside and a doji candle appears, this means that the upwards movement is losing steam, but this right here is not alone a bearish reversal signal. With that said, if we combine the doji candle with the next red candle, we can see that the next red candle opened above and closed below the doji. So in this case, we have a bearish engulfing pattern that actually included a doji candle. Once again, it is preferable if this pattern appears at a resistance. And in this case, you can see we did indeed find resistance for multiple, multiple days here, right here. So we can draw a resistance here and we can see that our bullish engulfing indeed came in at the resistance. As for our position, this is a bearish candle. So we do want to short here and bet that the price will go down. So the most common entry point is to enter at the candle close 
the stop loss in this case we look a bit left here and we use the market structure so in this case i would set my stop loss above the resistance so above the highest point of the resistance right here you could also go for that tighter stop and set it right here but personally i would set my stop loss just above this point for this particular case as for the profit target let's keep it simple just for demonstration and use a two to one risk to reward ratio and you can see that in this case we once again locked in some nice profit. So in chapter one you learned how to understand candlestick patterns from a deep and foundational level. In chapter two you learned some important principles on how to actually use that knowledge to trade candlestick patterns. And now you know five super useful and super common candlestick patterns. So guys I think you are ready for the final chapter in this video, my top five candlestick patterns for advanced traders. So now guys, we have reached the final chapter of this candlestick course. In this chapter, we will take a look at my top five advanced candlestick patterns and to get as much value as possible from this chapter i highly recommend you guys to watch at least chapter one and chapter two uh, before diving into this one and the reason for this is that in order to understand these you know more advanced patterns we definitely need the knowledge from chapter one and chapter two and i also really think that if you watch chapter three as well you will be able to gain even more from this chapter but now without further ado let's take a look at these five patterns as well as how we can trade them. The first pattern I want to take a look at is called the island reversal. And this right here is the bullish version of the pattern. We also have a bearish version, but let's start here by taking a look at the bullish version. So the first thing we need to see for this pattern is that we need to have a downtrend. As you can see right here, we have multiple strong red candles in a row, and we can clearly see that the bears are in control over the market. What then needs to happen is that we need to see a gap. You can see this right here is what we call a gap. And this is basically when we have a candle opening far below the previous candle. You can see this candle right here created some space right between the previous candle and this is what we call a gap. When we have a gap in a downtrend we call it a gap down or a bearish gap and this indicates that the bears have strong conviction and we are seeing a strong downward momentum. The second part of this pattern is what we call the island. The island is you know some candlesticks that preferably goes pretty much sideways and we want the island to happen just after the gap down. So we want to see a gap down then we want the price to move pretty much sideways here for a while and then the final part of this pattern is that we want to see a gap up or a bullish gap. You can see between this green candle right here and the next strong momentum candle we had a strong strong momentum candle right here you can see that we had a gap this right here indicates that the bears completely lost control over this market remember we had a strong downtrend then the island right here this is a sign of caution for the bears you know a sign that the bearish movement to the downside might be coming to an end but with the gap up right here this is the signal that the bears are completely losing control and that we might see a strong reversal to the upside now guys let's dive into the chart and take a look at a real life example of the island pattern if you want to you can pause the video right here and try to identify the pattern yourself the island reversal pattern can be seen right here. And this right here is not a perfect example, but what you have to realize is that first of all, island reversals are pretty rare patterns. So you will seldom find, you know, the perfect pattern. And this is true for pretty much all candlestick patterns that most of the time they will not be, you know, as clean as they are in the textbooks. But what we can notice here is that we do have all the criteria we talked about. Before the island happened, we had a strong movement here towards the downside. Preferably, we maybe want to see an even stronger movement here towards the downside before the pattern appears, but this is still a strong movement towards the downside. And as you can see, before the island, between this candle right here and this right candle right here, we had a gap down, indicating that the bears are in full control. 
After this, we started to see some sideways movement. This right here is the island part of the candle and indicates that the bears are starting to lose a bit conviction here and the downtrend is starting to lose a bit of steam. And if you watch chapter three, you can actually also notice that right here, we have a bullish engulfing pattern. And as you know, this is a bullish reversal pattern indicating a potential reversal to the upside. So this is yet another warning sign for the bears. However, guys, the nail in the coffin was right here when we saw a massive, massive up gap confirming the island pattern and confirming that the bears have completely lost control. Now you may wonder, how do we actually trade this pattern? Well, let's open up our long position right here. And the most common entry point is to enter at the candle close after the gap up. We can actually use our rectangle tool here to mark the gap so we see the gap more clearly. And as for your stop loss level, we can use a few different methods to set our stop loss. Many traders will set the stop loss below the lowest point of the candle where we entered. So some traders prefer to set a tight stop loss below the lower wick here of the gap up candle. So set your stop loss around there. However, some traders prefer a much wider stop loss and to set your stop loss actually below the gap. So this gray part right here is the gap. So they usually set their stop loss below the gap and also leave some wiggle room right here. But in this case, let's say we used our tight stop loss. So we have a pretty tight stop loss right here. And because we have such a tight stop, many times we can allow, allow for a bit higher risk to reward ratio. So we set a risk to reward ratio of three. And as you can see, after this reversal candle, the price continued to move up here and we locked in some nice profit. The next pattern I want to talk about is the rising three methods. And this right here is a continuation pattern. And in this case, it's a bullish continuation pattern. So the goal of this pattern is to continue the trend here towards the upside. There are a few things we need to see in order to have a valid rising three methods. First of all, before the pattern appears, we need to have an uptrend. The pattern itself consists of five candlesticks. The first candle needs to be a strong green momentum candle. So we want to see a green candle with a long real body. After the green candle appears, we want to see three consecutive red candles. And these red candles, uh, the body of these red candles should be pretty small. So something like here on the picture, you can see we have one, two, three relatively weak bearish candles. The fifth candle of the pattern should be yet another strong bullish momentum candle. And one important thing about this candle is that preferably we want this green candle to at least break the highest point of the first red candle. So we want to break this point right here. And preferably we also want this uh, green candle to break the highest point of the real body of the first green candle. So as you can see here on the picture, we do want to break this line right here. It's after this break and when the fifth candle closes that the rising three methods is confirmed. If we visualize this pattern, we can actually see that it looks something like this. And if you are familiar with chart patterns, you can actually see that this is pretty much the same thing as a bullish flag. And the bullish flag is a bullish chart pattern on the shorter time frame. So as you can see here, if we learn to understand candlesticks, we can learn to see chart patterns happening on the smaller time frames by only looking at candlesticks. So this is one reason why it's so, so important to have a deep understanding of candlesticks and candlestick patterns. Um, now guys, we are very soon ready to jump here into the chart. Uh, but real quick before we do that, guys, if you so far are enjoying this video, this is definitely the longest and you know, most comprehensive video I have ever made. Um, so if you like this video so far, it would be super, super awesome and helpful if you show that by dropping a like on the video. But now guys, let's jump back here into the charts and take a look at a real life example of this pattern. Uh, so right now, as we're speaking, we're looking at Amazon on a daily time frame. And as you can see, if we zoom in here, you can see that we, first of all, we talked recently about gaps. And here you can see that we had a massive, massive gap here before this strong momentum candle. Uh, so this chart is already looking pretty bullish, right? Uh, but if we zoom in even more, you can notice that we have a rising three methods pattern right here. So as you can see, first of all, the first candle of the pattern is this green one right here. Uh, and this one comes after a very strong move towards the upside. Uh, and that is the first thing we need to see. We need to see a strong move towards the upside. 
and then the first candle of the pattern needs to be a strong green candle. As you can see, yes, in this case we did have, you know, a pretty, pretty long wick here, but this is still, you know, a strong enough candle to be the first candle in the Rising 3 methods. And as you can see, after this candle we had one, two, and three red candles. And all of these red candles have relatively small uh, real bodies. Yes, the bears managed to push the price down, but there is no real conviction in this move. You can also see that by looking on the wicks, we pretty much have, uh, these are called spinning top candles. And this right here is exactly what we want to see for the rising three methods. If we take a look here at, at the fifth candle, we can see that we had a strong momentum candle, exactly what we want to see. And we can also see that the fifth candle closes below the real body of the first red one. And we also close slightly above the real body of the green candle. So all our criteria is met here and we are ready to take our trade. So let's go here and open up our long position. The most common way to enter the rising three methods is to enter here at the candle close of the fifth candle. And many times we do want to set our stop loss just below the lowest point here of the pattern. In this case, the lowest point is the candlestick wick of the red candle. So we set our stop loss below there. And as always, I also allow for some wiggle room. So I set my stop loss a tiny bit, uh, you know, below this point right here. As for our target level for, you know, just for demonstration, let's keep it simple with a two to one risk to reward ratio and as you can see in this case yes it took a while but eventually the uptrend continued here and we met our profit target now guys the time has come for the separating lines pattern and this right here is the bullish version of the pattern but everything i say here is true but the opposite for the bearish separating lines pattern and there are a few things we need to have confirmed in order to have a bullish separating line the first thing you can notice here is that this pattern is a continuation pattern so the goal of this pattern is to once again continue the uptrend so before the pattern we need to have we need to have an uptrend and the goal of this pattern is to continue the trend in the same direction that is why it's called a continuation pattern we want to continue the trend up here the pattern itself consists of only two candlesticks this time uh, and as i said the first important criteria is that before the first candle happens we need to have an uptrend uh, the first candle is actually a pretty bearish candle you can see the first candle is actually a strong red candle against the direction of the trend. So you can see that after just looking at this candle, this is definitely a warning sign for the bulls and a sign that this uptrend where we are in might actually be coming to an end. Many times this red candle can even be something like, you know, a bearish engulfing pattern. Let's for example, imagine that this candle before the red one is a green candle. Then you can see that this would have actually been a bearish engulfing pattern. So the first candlestick of this pattern is a very bearish one, but this bearish sentiment changes completely after we see the second candle and it is this second candle that completely switches this from looking bearish to become a strong bullish continuation pattern because this next green candle indicates that the bears that tried to reverse the trend right here completely lost control. All the traders that entered on this bearish engulfing pattern trying to short betting that the market will reverse are actually now in a loss. And as you know, and when short sellers have to exit their position, they actually need to buy back the stock or buy back what they are trading. And this can actually lead to increased pressure towards the upside. And that is one thing that makes this, this continuation pattern even more bullish, indicating a strong likelihood of a continuation of the trend towards the upside. Let's jump back here to the chart and take a look at a real life example of the separating lines. We are looking at Shopify on a daily time frame, by the way. But as you can see in this case, we are seeing a strong uptrend. We're seeing a strong trend towards the upside. However, suddenly a strong bearish momentum candle appeared. In this case, the red candle together with the previous green candle is actually what we call a dark cloud cover. And that is a bearish pattern 
indicating a potential reversal here towards the downside. So after this red candle right here, we're probably seeing many bulls in doubt. And it's also likely that many short traders enters right here, betting that the market will go down. However, if we take a look at the next candle, we can see that we have yet another stronger green candle, meaning that all the traders that entered during this bearish dark cloud cover are now in a loss. And this right here is our confirmation for the separating lines pattern. And now I actually realized that I forgot to mention something on the theory part of this pattern. And that is that the green candle, we want this green candle to open at or near the highest point of the red one. So this is actually the last criteria of the separating lines is that the next candle needs to open close to this point. As you can see in this case, the green candle opened just slightly below, but this is still good enough to be a separating lines. As for the entry point, let's open our long position. The most common point to enter is to enter here at the candle close of the separating lines pattern. And when it comes to stop loss level, remember from earlier in this video, we usually want to use market structure. So we want to take a look at previous price to improve our stop loss level. And in this case, we can actually see that Shopify had a pretty significant resistance level right here. You can see we did have one pretty clear touch right here, and we had yet another pretty clear touch as resistance. And we can also notice here that where did the red, uh, strong red candle come in? Well, not surprisingly, we can see that this red candle actually appeared pretty much exactly at the resistance. So in this case, we actually had many valid arguments to short the market. We had the bearish dark cloud, cloud cover, and we also had this pattern appearing at a key resistance. However, this green candle right here marked the breakout from this resistance level. So this made the separating lines pattern even more significant. So you can actually use this previous resistance to set your stop loss. One way to set your stop loss is to set the stop loss below the previous resistance, right? Because if the market managed to break below here, then it indicates that this breakout was just, you know, a fake out or a false breakout. And it's very likely that the price will indeed start to reverse. So that is a, you know, very good level to set your stop. As for your risk to reward ratio, let's keep it simple with a risk to reward ratio of two. Uh, and as you can see, in this case, we did reach our target. However, if you used a larger uh, risk to reward, let's say you used a risk to reward of three, you can see that in this case, yes, you did also reach your uh, target in this case, but it was very close. If you used a risk to reward of four, you would have actually failed this trade right here. So now guys, let's take a look at our fourth pattern. And this pattern is the morning star pattern. This is a super strong pattern that I really like. The only downside with this pattern is that it's pretty rare, uh, but this makes it even more important to be able to spot this pattern. Uh, and this pattern right here is a reversal pattern. So before this pattern appears, this is a bullish reversal. So we need to see a downtrend before this pattern appears. And the goal of this pattern is to reverse the trend towards the upside. The morning star consists of three candles. The first candle is a strong bearish candle. So this one indicates that the bears are still in full control of the previous downtrend. The second candle is a small green one. And one important aspect about this green candle is that we want to see a gap here in between the real body of the previous red candle and the new green candle. And you may wonder, what does this candle actually mean? Well, it means that the bears are starting to lose some control of the previous downtrend. Remember, before this uh, candle appears, we had a strong trend towards the downside, and this candle indicates some uncertainty. It doesn't imply a reversal, it only applies that the downtrend might be losing some steam. However, after the third candle appears, we can see that the sentiment shifts completely and the bulls have clearly regained control over this market. One important thing we do want to see with this third candle is that once again, this is not super clearly visible on this picture right here, but we do want to see a gap between the real body of the green one and the third candle. So between these two real bodies, we want to see a gap. And the reason we want to see a gap is because a gap 
implies a strong shift from bearish to bullish momentum. Another thing we want to see is that we want the green candle to close above the 50% mark of the real body of the red one. The reason we want to see this is because this third candle needs to be a strong momentum candle. Now let's take a look at a real life example of this pattern. As you can see right here on the Apple daily chart, we had a clear downtrend. You can see even though we had mostly green candles, you can see, still see that this was a strong trend towards the downside. And the Morningstar pattern happened right here. As you can see, the first candle of the pattern was a strong red candle here, indicating that the bears are still in full control of the downtrend. Then the second candle appeared right here. And there are a few interesting things we need to consider about this second candle. The first thing is that as you can see, we had a gap between this, this candle and the red one. And that is something that is one of the criteria we need to see for the Morningstar pattern. Another thing we can notice here is that the real body of the red candle was a small one and this is yet another thing we need to see for the morning star. But very interesting, in this case you can see that this candle was actually also a bullish hammer candle. And as you know, this candle by itself is actually a bullish reversal pattern indicating a potential reversal here towards the upside. So we have many signs indicating already at this candle that this trend might be coming to an end. However, the nail in the coffin was this green candle right here. You can see we had a massive, massive gap between the second candle and the third candle, and that is something we need to see. We can also see that the green candle closed above the 50% mark very clearly, closing above the 50% mark of the first candle of the pattern. So we have multiple, multiple reasons why this right here was a beautiful morning star pattern. As for our entry point of this pattern, the most common way to enter is at this green candle right here. Uh, you know, one could actually argue that you could try to enter already on the second candle because of, because of the hammer, but let's show this as a morning star pattern right here. Uh, many people, as for the stop loss, many people will set the stop loss below the lowest point of the pattern. So this is a pretty, you can say, a pretty wide uh, stop loss. However, there are some other var variations as well, such as setting it below the lowest point of the green candle. But let's actually use the wider stop loss in this case, and with a risk to reward ratio of two you can see that we did reach our target. It took quite a while here because the morning star is often a larger pattern and larger patterns tend to take more time. However, at the same time, they also offer more gains. You can see that this trade right here would have given you around a 30% profit. So this was a massive, massive bullish trade right here. Last but not least guys, I want to show you the frying pan pattern. This right here is yet another reversal pattern. So before this pattern appears, we need to see a downtrend. And the goal of this pattern is to reverse the pattern towards the upside. Uh, we also have a bearish version of this pattern. I think this one is called the dumpling top pattern. Uh, so everything I say here is also true, but for a reversal to the downside. But in this case, let's focus here on the bullish version. So the reason this pattern is called the frying pan is because it basically looks like a pan here. And and then the last candle is, you know, something you, you flip with your pan. And what we want to see here is that in a perfect world, we want to see, as I said, first we want a downtrend right here. And after the downtrend, we want to build a sort of bottom. In a perfect world, we want to build pretty much a round bottom here. You can see the downtrend is losing momentum. We are starting to see, you know, some doji candles right here, indicating, as you know, indecision in the market that neither the bulls or the bears are in full control. Uh, but then the price start going up here a bit and it is with this last candle right here that the pattern gets confirmed. And the reason that this is our bullish, you know, confirmation point is because with this candle right here, you can see that the price actually gapped up. And a gap up implies a strong momentum shift in the market, indicating that this market that have for a long while been building a bottom starts to reverse here towards the upside. So guys, let's jump in here to the chart and take a look at a real life example. And as you can see in real life, we usually don't have these, you know, perfect patterns, but as you can see, we had a downtrend, a strong trend towards the downside, 
and then we started to see a bottom looking structure appear here you can see in this case we did not have this perfect round bottom we had more something that looks like this right uh, but this is still what we want to see the most the most important part is that we need the price to start building something looking like a bottom you can see that during this part we had many doji candles you know doji candles right here spinning top candle uh, you know many candles indicating that at least the bears are starting to lose control here of the previous downtrend with that said, the most important candle of the whole pattern is the gap up candle. So as you can see, between this candle right here uh, and the previous red candle, we saw a strong gap up. And it is with this candle we confirm the frying pan pattern. This price gap right here between the red candle and the green candle indicates that the bears are completely losing control of this market and that it's likely that we're about to see a strong reversal here towards the upside. And you may of course wonder how do we trade this pattern? Well, as always, it's pretty common to enter here at the candle close of the final candle. Um, the stop loss, uh, you can use a, a few different methods for your stop loss. Many traders will aim to set the stop loss below the lowest point of the final candle of the pattern right here. But because this is a sort of, once again, this is a larger pattern, so we are usually looking out for these large, you know, multiple, multiple candle moves here. Some traders will actually look at the market structure before this gap happen and set the stop loss for example, all the way down here. You can see below the lowest low here before the gap up. But in this case, this stop loss is a bit too wide in my opinion. So I would probably set the stop loss below the lowest point of the green candle, but I would allow for quite a bit of wiggle room. Uh, so perhaps setting your stop loss something like this. And as for your profit target, because this is a larger pattern, you can allow, allow for a larger profit target. If we use a three to one risk to reward ratio, uh, it would have looked like this. But as you can see, in this case, it was actually the start of a major reversal in uptrend. So you could have used a larger risk to reward ratio and still be in you know clear profit for this pattern. But all right guys, so that actually wraps it up for this whole candlestick trading course. Uh, I really, really hope you enjoyed this course and of course that you got some value from it this is by far the longest video i have ever made and i put you know many many hours into it so if you guys did enjoy this video it would be super super awesome and kind if you can show that by dropping a like on the video that really helps out a lot it helps with the youtube algorithm to you know push this video out to more people and everything like that and it also makes me know that you guys are enjoying this longer form educational content and also of course guys if you want more similar content such as this one i plan to make many similar videos in the future uh, please guys don't hesitate to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will get notified when i upload my next educational technical analysis course but all right guys so mastering candlestick patterns is only the beginning so if you guys want to learn more about trading and technical analysis, I highly recommend you all to watch my educational technical analysis playlist here on YouTube. I really hope to see you all over there, but for now, take care, ciao, ciao, ciao.